And welcome to our June edition of Sports Highlights. My name is Greg Bicaveras. Glad you're with us as we start the summer off right. For more, log on to nnpstv.com. Our show is a communicator, award winner, as well as recognized by the city council a year ago as well. Our program comes on Mondays at 7 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m., weekends at 9 a.m. For more, log on to nnpstv.com, at Greg Bick on Twitter. Let's welcome this gentleman. Our next uh, guest coming up right here, first and foremost, is Scorpio Brown, who went to Warwick High School and, of course, is an assistant football coach at Warwick High School, as well as track and also in health and nutrition as well. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. How did you get involved in sports? Man, um, I started when I was probably about six years old, um, playing, playing around outside, um, out in Newsom Park and, and having a good time. and. Um, Got an opportunity to play at the uh, boys and girls. No, I was playing at the boys and girls club. Um, you know, just having fun. Then I wind up playing rec league football for Doors Miller, mm -hmm. and um, wind up falling in love with the game um, of football. And been playing it for a long, long, long time now. Um, and I enjoy it as well as uh, track and field, basketball, different things like that. And you know, it always keep you keep you occupied. And um, and also when you enjoy something, you continue to do it. And, have fun with it. But the desire, the dedication you saw the kids back then when your brother played, and even before that into the 80s and so forth, there wasn't a whole lot of internet distractions. Now, trying to coach a kid who's got a lot of distractions before they even get to the field because you have to still practice to get where you need to be. Um, I, I preach to my kids all the time about um, work ethic um, as well as um, the drive to you know, enjoy what you're doing. Um, I have a lot of kids now that's getting scholarship offers, um, that's getting emails, tweets, and different things like that now with social media uh, from college coaches and just making them realize, you know, that just humble yourself, continue to work, continue to grind, and everything will fall in place. Talk about some of the activities you played in. You played at work, you played football, you went to Hampton University, you played a little bit in the arena. Talk about all the different avenues you played in? Well, um, starting, starting off at Wart, um, I, I was actually um, blessed with having a great coach under Tommy Riemann. Um, he actually groomed me and helped me to become a better athlete, a smarter athlete as well. Um, pretty much unlike other programs, we pretty much ran a college program, ran a college system and a college program uh, when I was at Wart High School, so it actually prepared me to get ready for the next level as far as going to Hampton University. Um, the transition from high school to college, only thing that was different was academics. You know, as far as you're on your own, you really don't have your parents, different things like that, but you'll be able to schedule things in order to put everything in place. So when you get to college, you're able to take care of football, take care of working out, as well as take care of your books, because that's the main thing. Because, you know, I preach to my kids still to this day, you are a student athlete. So, um, so with that, it was, it was, um, Fun, you know, um, it was kind of hard adjusting at the beginning, you know, as far as the transition from high school to college. Um, but, you know, sooner or later you have to, you know, you have no choice. And then also with uh, having a brother, older brother, uh, Elton, um, with him being at UVA, he was able to, you know, give me the ropes of what I need to do, how I need to uh, schedule myself, schedule different things, as well as uh, structure a plan but what I can do as far as moving forward for those four to five years in college. So then after I got done with, um, after I finished college, um, I wound up getting picked up playing arena football. Um, my first team was the Daytona Beach Thunderbirds, which is in Daytona Beach, Florida. Um, played one year under that, because in arena football, you're pretty much under a one-year contract, because uh, a lot of teams wind up folding and different things like that. It's all based off your fan, your fan base. So I played one year in Daytona, played four years in Baltimore for the Baltimore Mariners, which I won two championships with them, um, played for the Richmond Revolution for one year, 
played for the Harrisburg Stampede, Philadelphia Soul, as well as the San Jose Sabercats. All right, you um, mentioned Elton. Talk about what you made now that you laugh at it and your, your stipend for on the road for a meal compared to, let's say, your brother's. Oh, yeah. uh, just see, do a comparison. See, yeah, so the comparison is definitely of night and day. <laughs> that's, that's guaranteed. Um, but you have, you have sponsorships through different um, restaurants and different mm -hmm. things like that. So it, it kind of, you know, everything is pretty much covered as right. um, far as when you play in arena football. With, with my brother, you know, they, they, they're making enough money to pretty much cover their own. So yeah. when, with going to Arizona to see my brother, we're going to Papa Do's or we're going to Roof Chris or we're mm. going somewhere like that yeah. to, eat, to eat lovely. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, because they, they're receiving that type of pay. Uh, in the NFL, but you know, far as with arena football, you you going to a mom and pop spot that's that's helping out with the right. program, different things like that, or uh, as well as a restaurant that's known in that city that you're playing in. So um, I mean, that's definitely is definitely apples and oranges. But I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, we ate good. Though. Sure. Now talk about track. Track and field. Um, I came on as an assistant coach three years ago. Um, I ran track in high school as well. So, uh, I guess I did pretty good in high school. Um, I was all-state high jumper as well as all-state in the uh, 110 hurdles um, as well as the 300 hurdles as well. Um, so I, I have pretty much a, a background of track and field. And um, I was blessed with the opportunity with having Coach Holmes reach out to me and said, Scorpio, I, I need you to help out. So I um, came out there and helping the kids get bigger, faster, and stronger, just like, just like with football. Um, it's a growth um, process as far as with the kids, as well as uh, teaching them discipline and dedication also. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's pretty much it falls hand in hand because a lot of my football players run track, so, you know, it helps. That desire, we're talking to uh, Scorpio Brown. Of course, you can see him on Facebook. He's the assistant football coach at Warwick High School, assistant track coach. He's involved in training. He's played in the Arena Football League. He's pretty much done it all. but. It comes down to business. Sports is only so much. It still comes down to business. You see Michael Jordan, you see the Patrick Ewing, the basketball coach at his alma mater, Georgetown, that people get into businesses, and that's what life's about. Yes. Uh, definitely as far as um, businesses, I know me personally, um, with playing sports, I wind up getting into the personal training field. Um, and um, me working out and keeping my, myself healthy it helped me um, start actually learning and going farther into it, as well as with my degree uh, with kinesiology, the study of the body. I had no choice but to actually, you know, follow up on that and actually uh, got into that field because it's a, it's a, it's a great field to be in at this moment because a lot of people want to be in shape anyway. So, um, so I, I, I sat down, did research, get, got certified, and actually uh, took off with it and started out my own brand with Two Stick Training. And um, I've been doing it for about five years now, and it started off it started off slow, but you know, just like any other business, you know, you you're dealing with your own clientele and building your own clientele right. as well. So, me being a household name somewhat, it actually helped a whole lot, you know, with social media. Social media really helped my business also with posting on Twitter, posting on Instagram, uh, as well as Facebook. Um, a lot of people are looking for personal trainers, so they reach out to me in inbox and DMs. And they say, hey, um, I'm looking for a personal trainer. How much do you charge? So on right. and so forth. And, um, you know, with me on a regular basis, I make sure that I have a meal plan set up for them um, as well as see what they, they what they can eat, what they can't eat, as well as um, work on pretty much, you know, as far as the structure of time throughout the day as far as breakfast, lunch, dinner, also the healthy snacks in between. All right. And we'll, you talk about the diet. And... The carbs, the sugar seems like it's the killer. You can you can cut out certain things, but if you cut out those two things, you see a difference. Yes, yeah, so you'll definitely see a real big difference uh, when you cut when you cut out your carbs and sugar, man. Um, a lot of people that I train want to lose that lower stomach, want to lose that excess fat on their body. When you cut that that out of your diet, you'll see a big difference in your body mentally and too, mentally as well. Yeah. Um, also, with, with you know with healthy snacks, with fruit. Um, as well as smoothies, it helps you pretty much pick gas in your car. Your car is your body, right. and it ha helps you get out, get through the day, and um, with active activity, activity. Right, because there's so many energy drinks now. That's another whole topic. 
your involvement with Antoine Buffet and your thoughts on camps in general from former athletes. Sometimes they come, sometimes they go, sometimes they sustain, sometimes they don't. Talk about your involvement with Buffet. Of course, he went to Denby High School. Yes, uh, Buffet is uh, pretty much, you know, we, we call him, you know, uh, a, a family member. He's, he's a brother to me, honestly, um, with, um, with everything that he does in the community as well as in the city is a, is a blessing because there's a lot of people that make it out of Newport News but really don't give back to Newport News. Um, that's the big thing that I always, you know, admire about Antoine. He always do his best to try to give back with the football camps, with uh, uh, Shutdown Academy, uh, with my brother. They collab together and uh, put together a, a beautiful, a beautiful uh, product. As uh, far as with the cheerleading, with um, dancing, with football, with mentorship, um, and different aspects of that. Because at the same time, you know, we all are from Newport News, and we do our best to try to get these kids' mindset together as far as future, 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 future. You are the future. So um, with the mentorship, with the uh, football program, um, teaching the kids discipline and different things like that is always good. Absolutely. Talking to Scorpio Brown, of course, uh, you talk about uh, how important it is to be a role model. Really, your parents should be your role model. Athletes are, you know, they come and go as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, you talk about your brother. He sustained and persevered. He played for Virginia. He played for the Cardinals. And, uh, you know, like, you know, the shelf life is not forever. Exactly. It's not forever. Um, we was always taught um, uh, from a good friend named Carl Francis. Um, he always told us, what are you going to do when the ball goes flat? Mm -hmm. So we always wanted to prepare ourselves in, in a position to make sure that we're able to continue with life when football is no longer there, when basketball is no longer there, when that sport is no longer there, you're able to still withstand life after, and you're able to, um, you know, have, you know, as far as role models that will help you become a better citizen in society other than, you know, just being, oh, I'm bigger than this person, or I'm bigger than that person just because I played on Sundays, or I did this, or I did that. We're all equal. We're all human beings, and um, pretty much, you know, having role models like that is always good. And that's what's amazing about LeBron James. You look at him physically, mentally, he's got it together. He doesn't get in any type of trouble. He's a family man. The ball will never go flat with him because he's involved in so many businesses as well. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like when he's playing against NBA players, it seems like he's the NBA player and he's playing against kids. I mean, he's outmaneuvering them like Iverson did in high school. The same way he's at such an elite level physically, emotionally. Definitely. Um, um, doing research and studying actually LeBron um, as an athlete. His body too. His body type is, is, is freakish. Um, you, you really don't see that often as far as a big size person like that as well as tall in his mm -hmm. stature. Um, even being able to move like a gazelle as well. Um, that's always Bigger than the, bigger than the next guy, you know what I'm saying? You know, you have you have a KD. KD is skinny, right. but he's tall, but he's skinny. I mean, he can move, he can shoot, but he's not as big as LeBron. LeBron is 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 like a Greek Tank. god, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, you know, and having having a a person like that is is is, is definitely a dominating force. As well as he's a student of the game, he studies the game like no other. So he kind of knows the weakness of the defense that the the Celtics playing or the, the, the Wizards playing, he kind of knows them better than the next man because he does his research on the team. Are you so busy that you can just do training full time, just for, just trying to get from A to B with traffic and everything? Um, or you still like to do the other stuff? I love to do the other stuff. The other stuff is, as uh, far as coaching wise, is definitely, I always look at, I always look at coaching is, I walk the hallways, the same hallways as these kids at Warwick High School. I'm from the same neighborhood as these kids as well. And I kind of know somewhat of the struggle that these kids go through for as mentally as well as in the, in society. Right. So um so I always made it I made it my point to make sure that I I came back and and gave Ward as much as they gave me. You know, and that's that's the main thing. That's the re main reason why I 
I'm there. Because there's no app for showing your face and being yeah. present exactly. to these kids' lives. Very exactly. good. Scorpio Brown, all the best to you and your brother and your mom. You know how much I care about your brother and your mother both. Definitely. We've known them for a long, long time. And um, all the best in your time and your talent and your treasure, what you do on and off the playing fields. I appreciate it. Very good. Scorpio Brown right there from Warwick High School, but he wears a lot of different hats, folks. He's an example of sports and academics, athletics, activities, and the business world. Great guest right here on our June edition of Sports Highlights 2017. We roll on with our next guest, Craig Hartley, after this. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a scientist. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an engineer. Our younger students have the right idea. Today's leading careers are involved in science, technology, engineering, and math. Newport News Public Schools has embarked on an aggressive STEM education initiative that prepares students to take full advantage of STEM opportunities in higher education and career fields. So, what do you want to be when you grow up? Future Fitness with Alexis. Tune in weekdays 6.30 a.m., Mondays 7.30 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. And welcome back to our June 2017 edition of Sports Highlights. Congratulations to all the graduates as well, and thank you for supporting the Newport News Greek Festival as well. Hope you enjoyed Scorpio Brown, assistant football coach at Warwick High School. And this is Sports Highlights, at Greg Bake on Twitter, at Sports Highlight as well. We have Treg Hartley, the president of the Peninsula Bicycling Association. Treg, good to see you. Good to see you, Greg. How are you doing? How did you end up from Iowa to Virginia? Uh, the Navy. Uh, joined the Navy as a you know, typical farm kid in Iowa, went out to see the world, ended up uh, settling out here. My daughters went to Bethel High School, and uh, kids are out here, grandkids for the most part are out here, so we just stayed here. Very good. How did you get involved in bicycling as a, as a president? Oh, my. Uh, well, I've, I've been a bicyclist, I guess, most of my life, uh, taking bikes on Navy deployments with me and such. I uh, got a little more serious about it when I retired from the Navy, and I ended up joining the Peninsula Bicycling Association in 2012. Uh, about a year and a half later, um, I was at a meeting, just showed up to like the second meeting I'd ever actually been to, and got asked to be on the uh, board of directors. Six months later, the uh, uh, vice president had to step down because for work-related purposes, so I got asked to take over as vice president, not thinking at all that this might actually lead to becoming president of the club at some point, and here we are. Very good. All right, let's talk about uh, bike safety. When you ride a bike on a path, it's one thing. When you ride it out on a boulevard or a highway, it's another thing. Yes, it is. Um, if you Actually, if you Google bicycling laws in the state of Virginia, uh, you'll get a ton of information. It'll come back. VDOT is the, the authority on that. Um, the biggest thing to remember with bicycling safety is you're kind of on your own. You have to keep your head on a swivel and know where you're at and know what you're doing. Um, you have to be consistent with the rules of the road because all the rules of the road that apply to a car apply to a, a cyclist as well. A lot of people seem to think that you're supposed to ride your bike facing traffic, which is what you're supposed to do if you're jogging or walking, but if you're riding your bike, you're supposed to ride with traffic. And of course, you know, uh, following the, the various traffic laws as far as stop signs and, and stoplights and such as well. Absolutely, because when you see a motorcycle on the road or the interstate, let's just say that's a motorized bike, and I'm gonna ask right. you what your thoughts about a motorized bike in a second, that 18 wheelers don't see them. You're right. So a lot of times you're on Wark Boulevard, Jefferson Avenue, or Mercury Boulevard, cars don't always see bikes. You have to have a lot of peripheral vision, and that bike has gotta be maintained very well so it won't break right. while you're driving. Hey, you want to make sure your bike is well maintained, make sure your tires, you know, check them on a, on a weekly basis for cuts and, and such like that. Um, 
if you're on a major road, like when I commute from my house to Langley Air Force Base, there's a number of four-lane arterials that I will take, including Big Bethel Road, Magruder, Armistead. I will actually take the lane, which means riding close to the center of the lane, and by Virginia state law, a cyclist is allowed to take the lane on any road that is less than 14 feet wide. Um, I do it, I advocate for it, not a lot of people are comfortable with it, but if you're actually in the center of the lane, you're in the motorist's field of view. If you're closer to the edge of you know, the side of the road, you're not necessarily in that person's field of view. And if they're distracted by anything, like a cell phone or texting or something like that, they may not see you until it's too late, or they may not see you at all. They may clip you and just keep right on going. And that's a totally different issue with the texting and the driving. Is One thing right. is to be a distracted driver, but normally you don't see many bicyclers on the road every day, especially you know, during the week, but you might see them more on the weekends. You usually see them more on the weekends. You're starting to see more and more people commuting back and forth to work. It's becoming more popular as we build more bicycle infrastructure on the peninsula. Hampton and Newport News have been uh, making some pretty good strides increasing the bicycle infrastructure because not everybody is comfortable riding the middle of the road. They would prefer taking, say, a bike lane or a, or a separate path. And the more those get built up, the more you'll see people actually out riding. All right, we're talking to Treg Hartley. He's the president of the Peninsula Bicycling Association. Greg Bicavaris, glad you're with us for our June 2017 edition. For more, log on to nnpstv.com. You mentioned the laws. Newport News has got laws. Virginia's got laws as well. So I guess they all come together. But um, it's funny, you see the, the Tour de France, and then you see the casual bike rider, young or old. Right. Yeah, the Tour de France is, is a great bike race. Uh, I know a lot of people like to think of it as the, the pinnacle of bike racing, but actually we have uh, two bike races here in the States that are actually much more arduous than that one. Uh, and their one, names? Is, one is called the Ram, it's the Race Across America, and the other one is called the, um, uh, I cannot even remember the name of it. It's basically, okay. it's a, cross, a self-supported cross-country race where uh, the first person to win it actually did it in just over 17 days. Very good. What's uh, some upcoming PBA events and what is your purpose? Well, uh, we've got uh, regular rides um, all throughout spring, summer, and fall. Um, you can go to our website and you can also get us on Facebook, uh, Peninsula Bicycling Association, and we'll have regular rides posted there for all types of riders. Whether you're a slow rider or a faster rider, we've got guys in our club, or guys and women in our club that are triathletes that compete you know, on national basis, international basis. And we've got casual riders who ride you know, single speed cruisers and a little bit of everything in between. So I'm sure you'll find something either on the Facebook page or on the, uh, the website, a ride that would suit your needs. So we have two great walking paths, the Nolan Trail at Newport News Park. Yes. Give us several biking paths that are just exclusive for walking or biking. Oh my gosh. The, the biggest news, at least in our local area, is the Capitol Trail. The Virginia Capitol Trail goes from Jamestown all the way to Richmond. It's 52 wow. miles and it's all completely separated from Highway 5. It, it follows Highway 5 almost all the way to Richmond and it goes down into the Shock Row bottom area of Richmond. That trail is completely segregated. Uh, last year, there was, they registered over a quarter million users hmm. on it, and it's continuing to grow. Uh, interestingly enough, there were a lot of property owners that were in that immediate area that fought it, and now they've realized that their property values have jumped about 20% because of the trail, because people want to live close to something like that. There is a plan in the works right now to extend the Virginia Capitol Trail to the south side and from Jamestown all the way down to Fort Monroe. And it's pretty much going to bisect the peninsula coming down through Newport News and Hampton. And then there will be feeder trails that will come off of it that will interconnect the neighborhoods. You're in the military. How about the Navy bases, the military bases, for the military people watching as well for their bike pass and base? I really can't speak much to the Navy base because we really don't have much there. Uh, the Air Force base has a regular riding club and the uh, Fort Eustis has a regular riding club. And we also have, at least with our bike club, we have regular rides out of Fort Monroe as well every Monday night. Well, talk about your club and how can the public get involved in it? Well, anybody can join. Uh, we're open to anybody. We don't discriminate against you know, race, color, size. You look at me. I'm a big guy. I ride just as much as anybody else in the club. Just You can join us on, on, uh, on our website. It's 12 bucks a year. Mm -hmm. so it's a nominal fee. And you can, that covers the insurance for any of our rides that you come on. It also covers 
other rides that we do, other group rides during the summer that are specifically for PVA members only. Absolutely. When you talk about uh, the time of the year, we're in June right now. Yes. When is the best time to ride a bike? Is it year round? Because it's tough, obviously, to, to ride it when it's snow on the ground. But, but I'm sure people still do. But, they do. Uh, let's talk about the, what's the best time of the year to ride a bike. It really, that's, that's purely up to the individual. Um, I'm a year round rider. Um, I, you know, I've, I've actually got video of myself on a snow ride, hmm. riding during a snowstorm, wow. which is just something I wanted to do. Yeah. Okay, I've checked the checkbox on that one. You didn't fall down? I didn't fall down. Okay. But uh, typically spring through fall, and there are some hardcore folks that continue to ride through the winter. Of course, here in, in Southeast Virginia, our winters aren't that bad. Hmm. So if you bundle up, cover your legs, maybe put an extra layer on, it's not a problem. What's really neat is when you go to the boardwalk in Virginia Beach and how many social bike riders are just casually riding the bike and observing the hotels or the ocean front. Exactly. Uh, and that's, that's a big thing that we're into is, is the casual bike riding too. Um, we have, uh, like I said, one of the events that we have down on uh, Fort Monroe uh, every Monday night starts off at the Oozle Finch Brewery. Mm-hmm. And we go out and we ride together and we get back from the ride and everybody goes, if you want to go home, you go home. And if not, you head over to the brewery, have yourself a beer and mm-hmm. sit down and chat. Very good. Well, when you talk about, do you ever think there'll be high school competitions for high schools? Do you think we'll see that like a high school biking team? Wouldn't that be neat? That would be great. There are high schools around the country that do that. Uh, we don't do that here, but that would be really great. And I know that there are high school kids here that do compete. We've got uh, parents of those children that uh, compete around the state, but nothing formalized within the school system. And what advice would you give to a first-time bike rider? I guess everybody as a kid starts on training wheels and go from there to a, what's the, what's the most elite bike that somebody can ride right now? Oh my gosh, you can drop $25,000 on a, on a racing bike if wow. you really want to spend that much. I ride a steel touring bike. It's about, about $1,500. Mm-hmm. But I've got nearly 35,000 miles on the bike. Very good. So I've got my money's worth out of it. All right. Of course, the website, of course, plug that into any social media. You're on Facebook. Plug all your social media. Well, we were on, uh, on Facebook. We're not on any of the other, like Twitter or anything like that. Um, the, 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 uh, the website is pbabicycling.org. Mm-hmm. And uh, come on out and ride with us. Very good. So really, it's something for everyone. It's a yes. sport for a lifetime as well. Absolutely. Very good. Get a lot of fresh air and enjoy it. Uh, biking is really just a great overall sport. Craig Hartley, president of the Peninsula Bicycling Association, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, that was our June edition of Sports Highlights right there with our two excellent guests, Scorpio Brown and Craig Hartley. For more, log on to nnpstv.com. Have a great summer. We'll be back with our brand new edition for August as well for 2017 as everybody enjoys the summer at the beach and the pool and riding the bike or walking, get some exercise, enjoy this great Southeastern Virginia where we live at. And of course, watch archives on nnpstv.com. So for Ray Price and the entire wonderful crew, I'm Greg Bicavaris. Happy June, and we'll talk to you soon.